So I just got done seeing Kenobi, and apparently people are very polarized on this. The two sides are, it was okay, but nothing special, versus it was really, really good to great. And I'm more in the positive camp. And I don't sense much in terms of the canon or the larger story that disturbed what we know. But again, probably the major failure here is the production value is much, much weaker than it should be, given the importance of these events and given the importance of the characters. But overall here, I think for the most part, they spent the money wisely. People complain the special effects should have been better or better done, but I thought for what they're trying to do thematically with Kenobi and in terms of the final, in terms of the fight that he has with Vader, it made enough sense that he would be doing this approach, and the way they executed it mostly made sense. It was pretty well done, pretty well choreographed. And it's understandable from what the character was going through in terms of overcoming trauma and wanting to win, because he's sort of been holding back. Why? Guilt? He just doesn't know how to react to Anakin, etc., etc. Don't know, but yeah, I would have liked something a little bit more spectacular, because, again, we knew he could do this, but would have been interesting if he threw like a, maybe a small meteor at Anakin and you know really really used a ton of force power but I thought the point was basically to humiliate Vader and really humble him and force him to confront basically his own crimes and his own past and I thought there was well enough especially the voice work with Hayden and James Earl Jones some people were saying it's an AI voice maybe maybe not don't care that was really well done, especially the makeup when we see parts of Anakin when they really go against one another. So that part of it was mostly well done. And that leaves the other half, which really, again, people are polarized, with Reva hunting Luke. And does this make sense with canon? Does it make sense with her? But I was surprised how much really good Owen and Aunt Beru we got. I did think it was a little bit contrivance that they're saying, we're on our own. We can't find any allies or anything. You'd think, like, well, I don't know. You could at least buy a droid to help you out, right? Provide a distraction. So that felt a little phony, and they do have enough resources. They could have helped them out that way. So that felt a little overly dramatic that, you know, they had no help whatsoever. It's like, you could get some help fighting Reva. So that felt a little silly. And the trope of her being like this movie monster hunting them in the dark. It's like, yeah, we did that already with the prequels, and I've defended the prequels on many grounds, but one of them is that Lucas is sort of using horror tropes with the Jedi kind of now being monsters hunting down people. So if you really know your Star Wars, you're like, eh, that part was nothing special. But again, I'm not joining people who say they hate Reva. Reva's the worst thing ever. Again, contextually and comparatively compared to somebody like Jar Jar, no, the character makes pretty good sense, but it is sort of like to me in a Dooku category that a lot of the important things with her happened off camera. So when you see the films, when you see him live action, you're like, what is he up to? Why is he like this? Big question mark. If you want to know more answers, you got to go to the novels. You got to go to the comics. You got to go elsewhere to get more information as to how and why he's working with the Sith and what his ultimate goals are. But within what we have in the films, you can kind of piece it together. But it is a bit of work that you have to do for yourself. And she's kind of like the same thing in terms of how far or how much she gave up to get the chance to kill Vader, so on and so forth. Was it worth it? Again, don't know. And I presume we're going to have more appearances with her. And the fan base is going to continue debating whether it's a good, bad character. But I thought in terms of the acting, it was actually very well done. Again, it was more minimal. But uh, I think that probably is what people were complaining, that she's so over the top at the beginning. But it does make sense overall in terms of the story. And we got a lot more than I even expected, not just Kenobi. I expected Qui-Gon Jinn, so that was no problem. He's actually been a favorite of mine. But he is a very problematic figure, given that he basically condemns Shmi to murder. Right? He just leaves her as a slave to be killed off. That's pretty awful. So he's always going to be like a jaded character for me. but. The final appearance, the cameo he makes was very, very satisfying. But Sidious coming in was really interesting. I wondered overall, like, what was going on here? Because they're spending a lot of resources really over nothing. Because 
Again, Kenobi to him really is just one name on the list. They spent a lot and lost a lot. Why are we doing this? How is Vader getting away with this? So I thought it was finally good that we got something with Sidious. I would have been satisfied if off camera, one of the, if the Grand Inquisitor or someone just told Vader, yeah, this is getting stupid. You got to stop. You know, the boss has called in. It's over. It's time to liquidate this little really silly, petty chase you're doing. But uh, Sidious basically having a confrontation, I thought, was very powerful, very well done. So the only issue here is production value keeps weighing down the show. It just looks cheap, which is fine. The first film still looks cheap, right? It was done with such a small budget. So, But again, it is sort of like they're just forced to just use what they can with what they have. But again, overall, story-wise, special effects, performances, yeah, all pretty strong. Um, but again doesn't look right in certain places, and that really diminished the impact of a lot of scenes. Pretty strong overall. I'm going to give it an 8.75, near perfect, and really a lot of excellent Owen. So I'm really curious if the show continues and we get another season. We're going to get more elaboration of how he and OB are basically going to try to figure out how to handle Luke. Pretty, pretty balanced him still being very, very cautious and stern, but having... Luke and him meet finally and sort of they kind of know one another. They're not friends, but now he knows, like, oh, this is oh, interesting, strange old guy who just happens to be in the background, which is what he is in the first film. Yeah, I don't get why people are so critical. It seemed for what Star Wars is. Didn't break the canon. Added whole new details. Really didn't diminish the characters at all. But as they creep closer and closer to the original trilogy, I'm sure these controversies will arise again, whether they should be, even if it's positive, traipsing near the Lucas territory. But I'm not a Lucas fanatic. Again, he did some stories. The people in Star Wars are going to do their stories. Just going to have to grow up and say, okay, you can prefer the Lucas stories, but it's not the only story to tell in the Star Wars universe. 